what can often happen is it feels like a rejection of the step parent simply because that child is asking for time with you. But a child's need for exclusive time with their bio parent is actually an opportunity for couples to work together in meeting the child's need for security. Because it's necessary if you want to eventually become a more connected, blended family. Welcome to the Blended Family Coaching Show, where you'll discover how to move your step family from just surviving to truly thriving. Grab your headphones and listen in as we share practical, real-life strategies for building healthy bonds. Understanding the kids' perspective. Romance and partnership. Parenting with great teamwork. And yes, even co-parenting with a difficult ex. We're Mike and Kim Anderson, and we believe with the right tools, every step couple can overcome the common challenges of step family life. Join us for authentic and sometimes comical conversations to discover how you can lead your family with confidence and create the future you really want. Hey there, thanks for joining us today. We're really Mm -hmm. grateful you're here and appreciate you trusting us to support you in your blended family journey. Mm -hmm. We know firsthand how challenging the journey can be. And here on the show, we want to encourage you with a couple of things. One you can have hope for the long-term success of your blended family. Absolutely. And two, you can create positive change. Now, we've experienced both of these realities in our own blended Mm -hmm. family and seen them come alive in the blended families that we've coached and supported along the way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, helping you to take action toward positive change is one of our primary goals for the show. Mm -hmm. We recently heard from Seattle Gilmore Mom in a (laughs) review over on Apple Podcasts that she felt our show offers ways to bring about both micro and macro changes that result in peace and healing to your family. Wow. Wow, Thanks for that feedback. We love that you're experiencing more peace and healing in your family, and we hope others will experience the same results. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're making positive change in your family, just like Seattle Gilmore mom, (laughs) as a result of what you're learning here. And we would love for you to take a minute just to share that by leaving a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. And you can do that just by clicking on our show in your library, scrolling down to the bottom past the episodes, and just clicking the star rating that you'd like to share. And then maybe click that link that says write a review. We'd really love to hear from you. Yeah. All right. Well, what do you say we dive into (laughs) today's show, hon? Yeah, and today we want to tackle a topic that can sometimes be controversial for step couples. It can create quite a bit of debate in your relationship and Mm. even lead to some conflict. Oh, boy. And sometimes this can even leave one partner or the other questioning the solidarity of their couple relationship. Sounds pretty serious. Yeah. Mm. It's not a new topic for us. We've talked about this plenty of times on the show before. In fact, it's a strategy that we suggest for just about every couple we work with. Mm. And, you know, sometimes couples are able to understand it and embrace it right away. But other times couples can really struggle with this concept for Mm. a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. And often their struggle is tied to some myth they believe about putting this strategy into action. Yeah. Today, we want to debunk those myths. So what is this big (laughs) controversial topic? It's the strategy of focused one-on-one time between a bio parent and their bio kids. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a simple and sometimes counterintuitive strategy for bonding in blended families. When it comes to bonding, the one-on-one strategy can be a powerful tool. But for many of us, it might feel like a step backward. It's easy to think that if we want to build bonds, then we should be spending lots of time together as a whole family. Mm -hmm. But the reality for most blended families is that the pressure and the tension is typically the highest when the whole blended family is together. And that pressure and tension create many bonding challenges. (laughs) And often when kids experience the discomfort that comes from those bonding challenges, they can easily blame the step parent or the step siblings and they conclude that they're just a threat to my happy family. Right, right. right. It can create all kinds of misunderstandings. Sure. But intentionally creating an appropriate amount of one-on-one time between bio parent and bio kids ultimately increases their sense of stability and security, which Mm. ultimately lowers the tensions 
when the whole family does come together. So here on the show, we've talked a lot about the need kids have for ongoing one-on-one time and connection with their bio parent, Mm. especially in the early stages of blending. Now, sometimes that's literally one parent with one of their bio children, Mm -hmm. and other times it can be a parent with all of their bio kids. Mm. We call that a bio unit. Right. The one-on-one experience removes the tension that can exist in step relationships Mm. just temporarily to foster that sense of stability and security in kids, and it really helps them relax a bit when they get back to time with the whole family. Sure, yeah. Now, we've shared this strategy for bonding, and if you want to understand more about that, we've included links in the show notes to several of our previous episodes that specifically explore one-on-one time as an effective tool for healthy bonding and why it's critical for kids. So you're welcome to check out those episodes if you really want to understand why this strategy is so effective. Yeah, but today we're going to talk about one-on-one time from a bit of a different angle. We want to talk about the challenges that many couples face around this strategy and uncover four myths that we as the adults often hold on to and why these myths can lead to misunderstanding, conflict, resentment, and a whole lot of heartache. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's tackle myth number one. Okay. Which is this. Biological one-on-one time creates a division in the blended family. Mm. That's the myth. And, you know, most of us start out our blended family journey with a preconceived idea of what family life is going to look like, right? And it's this beautiful picture of having this connection and lots of family fun time and experiencing meaningful memories together. Yeah, if you're old enough, it's like the Brady Bunch, right? Yeah, right. (laughs) You may not remember that. I don't know. And, you know, we don't usually daydream about how great it'll be to divide up the family and spend time in our (laughs) biological units, right? right? Yeah. (laughs) We imagine the whole family being together. And this idea of one-on-one time for bio units can seem counterproductive to what you're really wanting to experience as a family. So true. And there's nothing wrong with the picture that you might have of being a connected family. In fact, that's a great long-term goal. Mm -hmm. We want to hold on to that vision because that's what we're working toward. But there's something unrealistic about that picture that most of us imagine, and especially as it relates to our expectations of the timeline. Timeline. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because it fails to take into account some crucial realities about blended families. Mm -hmm. First, blended families are formed as a result of loss. Mm -hmm. You know, it all started with a loss of relationship in some way through a divorce, an abandonment, or a death of a loved one. If it wasn't for that loss, Mm -hmm. we wouldn't be here right now. That means you're starting out with some emotional challenges, some hurts and hangups that are lingering from that loss and different individuals are probably in different stages of grieving those losses. Mm -hmm. And even though we like to think that kids are super adaptable and they're capable of just kind of rolling with all the changes, most kids really aren't. So expecting that family time is going to be smooth and easy with that kind of emotional landscape is usually not a reasonable expectation. Yeah, you've got some hurting kids. For sure. You know, when kids are struggling with difficult emotions and loss, even if some of them are unspoken, it will impact how they respond to the people around them. You might be ready to engage in family time, but that doesn't mean everyone in the family is. Yeah. Mm. And another reality is that just because the two of you have fallen in love with each other and you're excited to blend... This doesn't mean that the kids are going to follow suit. Mm -hmm. We've heard it said that people living in a blended family are intimate strangers. Yeah, for sure. The kids may have spent time with the steps and they might even enjoy limited time with them, but that doesn't equate to instant connection or intimacy. Sure. And, you know, sometimes we have this idea that just because my new spouse is so wonderful and because I love being with them, that my kids are also going to find them wonderful and they're going to love being around them all the time too. Well, that's not true. No. (laughs) (laughs) And this might actually be the case for some kids, right? Mm, Especially younger ones. 
but this isn't the reality for many kids. Mm. And you know what? It's okay. It's all right if we've got a different perspective than our kids. We just need to be mindful about our expectations and move at a pace the kids can handle, which is most likely slower than you'd like. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a reality. Yeah, for sure. And, and there might be other realities at play in your dynamics that could be impacting how everyone responds to family time. Mm -hmm. But the point is that often our ideas of how things should be don't necessarily match up to the realities of the blending families. Right. And because of that, We've got to take a different approach, one that serves as a gateway toward that beautiful picture that you've been really looking forward to. Right. Mm -hmm. And now we aren't saying that you give up on creating that picture of the connected family that you originally dreamed of. Not at all. Yeah. That can be your eventual reality at some point in the future. Yep. What we're encouraging you to do is recognize that you can't force intimacy or expect family connection to happen instantaneously. Right. It just doesn't usually work that way. Sure. Instead, we're suggesting that you readjust your mindset toward your dream by strategically doing things in a way that helps to reduce stress and tension for everyone in the family. And patience is a primary key here. Yeah, for sure. You know, step family expert Patricia Paper now says slowing down speeds things up. <laughs> now, at first glance, her statement doesn't even seem to make sense. It seems kind of counterproductive. But in reality, it does hit the nail on the head for blended families. Absolutely. We've got to slow down and take a realistic approach if we want things to come together in the long run. So rather than pushing for what we want right out of the gate and expecting family connection to magically happen... We need to take a step back and focus on the long-term health and well-being of every individual member of our family. Mm -hmm. And because we start off as intimate strangers, like you just mentioned, mm -hmm. him, in our step relationships, that's really where that exists. We need to allow for time to grow those relationships, to lower the expectations and slow it down. And that actually helps us to speed it up. Mm -hmm. And a major catalyst to that relational growth in the step relationships is actually to provide kids with a sense of stability and security. This is critical. Kids who don't feel secure in their new blended family dynamic simply won't have the capacity to open themselves up to build step connections. So mainly what we're talking about here is building trust. Mm -hmm. Trust and insecurity cannot coexist. That's so we've right. got to create stability and security so that we can build that trust. And that's what this one-on-one -on -one strategy, strategy is really about, is yeah. all about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the strongest point of security for kids is within their intimate biological connections. Mm. That's just the truth. Right. They must feel securely tethered to those they already know, love, and trust before they can open themselves up to developing step relationships. Yeah. What we need to understand is that when a parent remarries, the natural response for a child is often this sense of insecurity. Mm -hmm. They wonder where they now stand with their biological parent. Yeah. You know, they think things like, I wonder if my needs are going to be met. I wonder if I'm a priority. Mm -hmm. And what are the evolving roles in the family now? Yeah. What is their new role and that of their step parent or their step siblings? Sure. And until these questions are answered and the child feels secure in their biological ties, they might remain guarded. Mm -hmm. And family time with everyone could create a tension in them that could cause them to act out or even withdraw. Mm -hmm. And that sabotages the family time that you're trying yeah, to create. Totally. It yeah. Acting really out tough. and withdrawing doesn't work very well no. in family time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the counteractive truth to this myth, this myth that the biological one on time, one time creates division in blended families, it's this genuine bonds in blended families begin with a sense of security in biological relationships. Absolutely. That's the starting point. It's the mm -hmm. platform that we're building from. And so we've got to put some intentional time there and providing security. It's a must before trust and connection can be grown in step relationships. Yeah. Hey, we just made that up. It's a must before trust. I like, <laughs> I like it. And, and you know, one-on-one -on -one time with the bio units is one of the most effective ways to get there. Yeah. Probably it, it, the it, most effective it, way. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Bio parents, you know, you can try to convince your kids that they should feel secure by telling them that they're loved 
and they're still a priority and you yep. should be telling them that. Sure. But this isn't usually enough. Mm. Kids really need to experience and to feel that secure biological connection in real life. Right. And quality one-on-one -on -one time together is the primary way to do that. Yeah. Without that, kids may always have those looming questions and feel that their new step parent is a threat to their relationship with their bio parent. Right. So far from creating division, biological one on one time is actually the gateway to the blended family's eventual connection because it provides the security needed to gradually grow true intimacy within those step relationships. That's right. All right. Myth number one debunked. We're so excited to let you know about something brand new we've created just for you. We've realized that with so many episodes available here on the show, it might feel a bit overwhelming to find the topics that matter most to you. That's why we've created a simple tool for you to receive a personalized playlist focused on your current struggle or your biggest challenge. That's right. It's called the Blended Family Breakthrough Quiz. You'll answer just a few questions, and based on your responses, we'll email you a curated custom playlist of episodes that are specific to you. This simple quiz will direct you to the most impactful episodes that pertain to you personally and keep you on track in your journey of discovery, learning, and growth. So, Scroll all the way to the bottom of the show notes for this episode and click the link to take the Blended Family Breakthrough Quiz today. Okay, let's get back to the discussion. Right. <laughs> all right, let's move on to the second myth. <laughs> Sounds good. Myth number two is that biological one-on-one -on -one time gives the kids too much power and control. Boy, this is a mm -hmm. hard one because it <laughs> really feels this way, right? Yeah. When kids feel uneasy or unsure about all the changes that are happening when a parent remarries, they tend to respond in a few different ways. Mm -hmm. They might act out in negative ways or withdraw and shut down. You know, for most kids, this is because they haven't yet developed the emotional awareness to identify or verbally express what's really going on right. inside for them. I can't tell you. Yeah. And so acting out in some way or shutting down is often the only means of expressing discomfort that they, they really have. That's yeah. part of their coping yeah, skills. Yeah, they're hurting. Yeah. However, some kids do have the capacity to express how they're feeling. They might even say something like, it just feels weird when we're all together, or I really miss the way things were before. Mm -hmm. Some kids might even communicate what they need, something like, Hey, can't we just hang out alone like we used to? Or I really want you to come to my soccer game, but I don't want my step parent to come. It makes things awkward than when they're around, right? Yeah, we hear yeah. th some of these things and these kinds of expressions, right? Either acting out or shutting down or making these type of verbal requests could happen at any time throughout the blending process. And, and most often we hear these things in the beginning right. of the blending process, but it can also happen after they've experienced tension or conflict in the home. And especially if they've had their feelings hurt by a step parent right, or there's right. been some difficult interaction. Yeah. And we know we aren't sharing anything new with you here today. All of us <laughs> living in blended family dynamics have likely experienced one or more of the kids For sure. reacting, you know, in ways of disappointment or sadness or anger or all kinds of emotions in one, one of these ways. Yep. But we bring this up because sometimes from our perspective as the adults in charge, we can start jumping to conclusions about mm -hmm. our kids and stepkids, right? That's right. Maybe we start to think that they're being manipulative yeah. or that they're just really selfish. Yep. We can view their behavior, their words and requests as unreasonable. Yeah, controlling. Right. Mm. And if this continues, often a step parent will become offended and feel that the child is resisting them or trying to sabotage their marriage. For sure. And a bio parent will start to feel guilty mm -hmm. and they might feel fearful of losing connection with their kids. Right. And this is when that stranded stranger and trapped teammate dynamic can easily kick in. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon we're working against each other as a couple, right? right? We're pushing for our own way and the kids are in the middle and they seem 
to be the ones pulling all the emotional strings in this dynamic. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to see why it might feel like the kids have a lot of power. And the truth is, you know, their words and their reactions do have some power, but it's not always true that they're intentionally trying to wield that power with ill intent. Yeah. And that's where we get stuck mm -hmm. in this myth that we're giving them too much power and control. You know, a, a child's discomfort with the situation has the power to elicit guilt and fear in their parent, like Kim just talked mm -hmm. about, who might then lean into their child because they love them and they want them to be okay. Sure. But then when the step parent experiences that partner's tendency to make their child's well-being a top priority, seemingly even over their marriage, it's really easy for them to start believing that their partner's being manipulated and that the child has too much control over them. They're, they're really doing that on purpose. Yeah. Our assumptions about the kids and about our partner then creates some highly charged emotions, which makes it difficult for couples to communicate and work through the issues as a united team. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, if we can strip away all the assumptions and the emotions and simply look at the reality here, most of the time what the child is doing is simply expressing their discomfort and asking for a need to be met. Right. They need to feel secure and connected to their bio parent. And there really isn't anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's actually healthy for our kids to be able to express how they're feeling and ask for what they need. Right. Even if how they go about it is annoying or frustrating for us, <laughs> assertively expressing a need is a skill that we actually want our kids to develop because it's going to serve them well as they grow and move into adulthood, for right? For sure, yep. But in these complex dynamics, and because of the trapped teammate, stranded stranger dynamic yeah. most of us seem to experience, sure. couples tend to get bogged down in their own painful emotions, and often the kids get labeled as having too much power and control. That's right. So let's look at the counteractive truth to mm -hmm. this myth that biological one-on-one -on -one time gives the kids too much power and control. Here's the counteractive truth. When families blend... Kids have valid needs that must be acknowledged and handled with care. We've got to stay focused mm -hmm. there. You know, when kids are hurting, a biological parent needs to spend some time nurturing their relationship and provide the emotional security their kids need. And the step parent must be empathetic and willing to make some necessary sacrifices while working with the bio parent, not against them. Absolutely. And you know, one thing I find really interesting is that we talk a lot about when parents divorce and remarried, how kids are forced to go along with so many decisions that the adults are making, right? right? They essentially have no control over a multitude of things that have a major impact on their lives, such right. as the people living in their home and sharing their personal space, you know, or mm. a move to a new neighborhood. Everything from switching schools to losing touch with friends and extended family that they care about. Daily routines and expectations change regularly. The rug just kind of seems to get pulled out from under them over and over as the adults around them make all kinds of decisions. Mm -hmm. A child's experience through all of this can often create instability because they really don't have a solid sense of control. Sure. And often they aren't aware of what's coming next. Hmm. They don't seem to have a say in the majority of changes going on in their own lives. Right. And all of those dynamics easily create a feeling of instability for kids. So their reaction is to try and gain some of that stability back. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how we as the adults find it so surprising when the kids try to gain a little sense of security and stability in this yep. one important aspect of their lives, their natural need to connect with their bio parent without the stress and all the pressure that comes from all the other new relationships going on. Yeah. And we need to ask ourselves, does this one request they're making really give them too much power? Mm. Or can we take it at face value and see it as a request for a legitimate 
need. Right. This is something we encourage you to really think about before you jump to negative conclusions about the kid's motives. That's right. And, you know, don't get us wrong here. We aren't saying that kids should have all the power. Mm -mm. And in fact, we do meet with couples often that describe their circumstances and we discover that the kids really have been given too much power and control. And we've talked about that in previous episodes about things like parent-child allegiances and how to overcome power struggles when kids oppose your decision to remarry and things like that. And, And we'll put some links in the show notes so that you can learn more. But what we're focused on today is genuinely listening to your kids and stepkids, identifying their valid need for security and stability, and then strategizing as a couple around how to meet their need and honor your marriage at the same time. This is an attainable goal, but you can't get there if you're bogged down in your own emotions or if you're jumping to negative conclusions about the kids. When you get stuck there, you're more often trapped in an either or mindset. Mm -hmm. It's either the kids or our marriage, but the healthy approach is actually a both and mindset and strategies that support the stability of your marriage and a sense of security for the kids are really possible. That's what you want. Yeah. And if you need help with some of those specific strategies to achieve this both and reality, please reach out to us. We've helped Mm -hmm. a lot of couples manage this kind of dynamic. Yeah. Don't stay stuck. For sure. And and you know, one more thing to think about around this particular myth and, and counteractive truth is that a child's request to spend time with Mm -hmm. a bio parent is not necessarily a rejection of you as a step parent. Right. Those are two different things. Mm-hmm. You know, I can kind of relate to that in even wanting to spend time with you early on mm-hmm. growing our marriage. There were times where it was really appropriate for us to go out on date night. That's one on one time as the adults. And it, and it wasn't necessarily that I didn't want Annika around. It was that I wanted to spend focused one on one time with you. And so I think sometimes we get this confused and we Mm -hmm. get this mixed up. And and I think that we're going to help kind of figure that out here in the next myth. But what can often happen is it feels like a rejection of the step parent simply because that child is asking for time with you. And because it feels like a rejection, it makes all those assumptions that we talked about just a moment Mm -hmm. ago about power and control really easy for us to jump to. But a child's need for exclusive time with their bio parent is actually an opportunity for couples to work together in meeting the child's need for security. Mm -hmm. We've got to sort that out in our minds because it's necessary if you want to eventually become a more connected, blended family. And, And we encourage couples to be strategic in how they go about meeting this need and to find a healthy rhythm that also nurtures their marriage and every other relationship in the family. Mm -hmm. So don't get stuck in this myth. Really own the the counteractive truth. When families blend, kids have valid needs and they've Mm got to be acknowledged and handled with care. And you can do that as a team, as a couple. That's the wise way to handle it. That's for sure. All right, let's move on to myth number three. Wow. Well, we got into this conversation (laughs) and realized it's kind of a long one. Yeah. So we're actually going to cut the conversation there with the first two myths. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to pick this conversation up next Next week, uh, right with myth number three. And in the meantime, Mm -hmm. I want you to really think about, am I believing, Mm -hmm. am I engaging or coming into agreement with one or both of these two myths? Right. And then next week, we're going to challenge you with a couple of myths that are specific to your role, mm-hmm. one for step parents and one for bio parents, and you're not going to want to yeah, miss it. Make sure you listen in on that one. That's right. So that's going to end mm-hmm. today's episode, mm-hmm. but we'll be back next week. Mm-hmm. Yep. So for today, that makes yep. this episode a wrap. Until next time. 